Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Green Entrepreneur Podcast. My name is Jonathan Small. I'm editor-in-chief of Green Entrepreneur. Really excited about my guest today, Carly Wolf, joins us on the program. She is the State Policies Director at NORML, which stands for the National Organization the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Great name, Normal. Has a little double entendre going on there. And uh, Carly's focus is on state level political and legislative efforts. Each year, she analyzes hundreds of pieces of marijuana related legislation, which is pending in state legislators, which is pending in state legislatures around the country, as well as in the US Congress. And she also collaborates with state lawmakers and advocates to move marijuana reform legislation forward and to assist with federal lobbying efforts on Capitol Hill. Carly, thank you for all your efforts on behalf of marijuana, uh, legalized marijuana, and uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here and talk about marijuana and everything that's coming up this year. Yeah, there's so much to cover. First of all, how did you get into this um, this position that you're in? How, what's your um, background? Yeah, sure. So I actually started working with Normal when I was still in college. I was oh, at wow. the University of Maryland, so I wasn't too far away. Um, I was studying criminal justice, and I knew I wanted to be doing some kind of like criminal justice advocacy work. Um, and I, I had uh, found Normal actually through – they had – they had a little bit of a presence uh, on the UMD campus. So I was introduced to them a little bit. And then I started interning with them when I was a senior. And then when I graduated that year, I ended up starting to work full time. So um, it was a really cool experience. And I'm still to this day learning new things every day. I'm sure. And it's such a new, I mean, everything is always changing. It's very fluid. Um, this year in particular is probably very intense for you and uh, with the election coming up in yeah. just under a month. So, or actually I won't, I won't time it, with the election right around the corner. Um, so I thought it would be very interesting for you to kind of take us through what we can expect on November 3rd and, and hopefully beyond November 3rd and look at some of the, the races um, that are going on. And I know, I know marijuana is on the ballot in a number of states. And um, I want you to sort of walk us through kind of where we are as far as, uh, you know, I don't expect you to be a psychic hearing and predict the future, but maybe kind of what, what we might, what we might expect uh, on November 4th when we wake up, uh, given that we actually have a real election on November 3rd. So, um, so let's take me through it. So some of the, the states have marijuana, Uh, legislation on the ballot for people to vote on and some of it is for um, recreational use some of it is for medical use so can you take me through the states i know for example i know let's start with the deep south um yeah yeah, so mississippi has actually it's it's an interesting situation in mississippi because They will be voting on medical marijuana, but it's actually two competing measures that are on the ballot. Strange. Um, So initially, the um, voters of Mississippi, there was a a citizen-driven initiative um, to qualify medical cannabis, and that was successful. Um, um, And that's measure uh, initiative 65, um, which was the citizen-driven one. Um, And then... Later, the legislature um, and activists have been saying that this was kind of a way for the legislature to kind of undermine the voters and confuse people at the polls, but um, they had passed an alternative measure um, to put on the ballot um, that a lot of the activists in the state have seen as more restrictive, and um, I believe it doesn't allow um, access to the flower. It only would allow, like, concentrates and other right. forms. So the one approved by lawmakers was a lot more restrictive and they're going to appear side by side. Um, so we're really urging voters to, to focus on um, initiative 65 rather than the alternative um, because we think that will be in the best interest of patients. Yeah. Um, what, what, so are yeah the chan- we, I, it's, uh, what are the chances of either of these passing? I mean, what are you guys, what is your, what is your polling finding? Yeah, so there has been a little bit of polling in Mississippi. Um, looking at the latest one, actually, it was from uh, a couple weeks ago. 
um, they, there was 63% of support for measure 65. So that's the one we want. So right. um, it's looking good as of now. Um, but again, I don't know how that the dueling, the dueling measures will actually yeah. know, now, it, but hopefully so, in Belgium and so there will be in some shape or form medical marijuana in Mississippi. Yeah. Just, we uh, don't know what, how it's going to all play out. Depending. Yeah. I feel like the lawmakers are going to try either way to like take it into their own hands and, uh, yeah, as make always. it into what they want, I which know. is kind of unfortunate. Um, cause Mississippi is one of those States that really needs it. I mean, they only have like a very limited, like CBD program right now. So right. they really right. need that expanded access down there. So let's talk about some of the states that are looking at actually making it recreationally legal. And I don't know what the terminology you guys use is there. Do you say recreational? I don't know. If that's uh, we right. usually say adult use. Adult it's use. A little bit better. more broad and kind of sounds better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> recreational sounds like, yeah, party. Yeah. yeah when it's yeah. not really that um, necessarily. So um, I know that New Jersey well, you tell me. So New Jersey, there's some states that are in play for. Yeah. So New Jersey was the first state that actually they were kind of unique because the the legislature did pass pass legislation to put it on the ballot um, rather than um, residents of the state, like gathering signatures and doing it that way. Um, so the legislature of New Jersey passed, passed a law to put it on the ballot. Um, so we'll see that there. Um, actually, I'm really excited about New Jersey. I grew up in Jersey, so it's yeah, my Yeah, you're from Jersey? I'm from New yeah. York, but uh, my father's okay. from New Jersey, so, you know, represent yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, so all my family's still there, so we're all really excited about that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I yeah, see it happening. Think- what are you thinking? Are you feeling that that's... I'm feeling yeah, optimistic I mean, about New Jersey. I, I really think it'll pass in Jersey, and again, the polling is all, like, in the 60%, 60 to 70% range, so... Um, yeah, it feels like... There. And I feel like all the New Yorkers are going to go over to New Jersey to get there. I feel like that one, like if New Jersey legalizes, that will really propel a lot of the other like Northeastern states to right. get the ball rolling, especially New York. Cause yeah, like you just said, there's going to be, be, be so many people just like crossing over the river from like Manhattan. And yeah, um, to, I can to totally see it. All these like border, the, all these border cities in New Jersey are going to become these big <laughs> dispensary yeah uh, stops and be like hoboken being yeah like, hoboken's gonna blow yeah. up <laughs> jersey yeah. city yeah jersey exactly city. um all right and so that's new jersey what else what, what else are we looking at here so south dakota is also so south dakota is also interesting because they have two separate ballot initiatives one for adult use and then a separate one for medical use Um, so they could really just go full throttle from not having any access to having medical and adult use. So, um, I think the medical one will, will, has, has a really good chance of passing. Um, I think the adult use one, um, also is polling pretty well. Um, but I feel like, I mean, medical, I feel like is a given now. Um, but I guess nothing. Stone, obviously. Nothing, it's nothing's a given, <laughs> unfortunately. With right, nothing's cannabis. a given. I don't want to jinx it either, so I won't say that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what else are we looking at here? So South Dakota, represent. Come on, got to do that. Yeah, and what else? We have Montana um, looking to legalize adult use. Um, they also. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's actually been much polling out of Montana. Okay. Actually, not much that I've seen so far. Um, but yeah, um, it's a statutory initiative. It would, it allow, it would allow possession of up, up to an ounce. I think most of the ones on the ballot would also allow a uh, limited, uh, personal cultivation, uh, which is something that normal, uh, always advocates for as part of a adult use legalization program. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think there, there has been a few different campaigns in Montana and then, um, the new approach, new approach Montana, which is the group behind uh, the campaign, um, they're they're backed by a lot of um, some other national like marijuana advocacy organizations. So um, they should have you know an, a lot of funding and um, enough at least to to get the word out and you know educate educate the masses on what they're trying to do. Yeah. So looking forward to to seeing the outcome in Montana too. Um, the other adult use state is Arizona. Yeah. Um, they were one of the more recent ones to qualify. And 
Actually, the support there, the most recent poll there, it, the support was actually, the, the margin of support was a lot thinner than we were seeing in the past. Hmm. I don't know if that was just like an outlier poll or like maybe support is not as high as we thought. Um, but back in July, we had seen some polling that was like 60, 62 percent, 65 even. Um, and then the most recent one, and actually also a few weeks ago in September, uh, that was done by Monmouth University. It was showing support more around like the, the low 50s. Interesting. Why um, do you think it's changed? Any idea? I'm not sure, honestly. I know like Arizona actually had a legalization uh, ballot initiative in 2016 that failed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's definitely up from then, from 2016. Um, well, it's but a conservative think, yeah. state. You generally yeah, generally a red state and an older older population right. yeah um but still even i mean we find that a lot of um older people are you know marijuana use use marijuana um yeah, as medicine sure. so it's um yeah i think it's what do you what it, what's the biggest sort of obstacle that you guys come up against in trying to push all these reforms um ahead is there still that stigma about what cannabis is I and mean, what what is it that yeah, you fight I think against so it? i think so and i think you are right in the sense that there is a, a pretty big generational gap um and i think we see i mean even though i mean among the 65 plus population actually that's the population where we see like marijuana use actually rising the fastest yeah. it's kind of ironic but yeah i think that you know especially like the older white people i don't know i think they just are behind the times a little bit um yeah. and especially when those are a majority of who is in u.s congress in the senate um so i think that there's definitely a generational gap and just i think a lack of like accurate information i think people are still you know referencing decades old research that has been debunked and um like just reefer madness kind of yeah, um, exactly. reefer stereotypes madness. And Cheech and you know Cheech and Chong kind of stereotypes. Um, do you meet regularly with legislator to with 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 lawmakers and you know you like you said there's a lot of old white people in Congress. I mean, do yeah. you, you sit down with some of those people or at least with their staff and talk to them about yeah. it? Yeah, I mean it's it's a shame this year because actually um, Normal's uh, big national like fly-in day for lobby day was is usually around this time where we have, you know, all our all our members from all over the country come onto Capitol Hill and talk to their lawmakers. And um, that's probably um, the once a year when we get like the most insight. We Face get time. Yeah. Usually with a majority of Congress, we get a lot of people to come in. And what do um, they say to you? I mean, generally on, on, in normal times, n normal, N-O-R-M-A-L, um, in normal times, what do they, what do they, like you said, what are they, what are the concerns that they express yeah. to you? Um, I think a big concern is like youth access. People think that, you know, with legal marijuana, there'd be all these kids that have easier access and that are using it and getting high. Um, but there's actually been a lot of research that disproves that. Actually, there's a lot from like Colorado and Washington that shows that youth use has pretty much stayed the same and that more, more kids and adolescents are, uh, their their perception is that it's harder to get now because which which really makes sense if you think about it because if you're going to like a black market drug dealer I guess on you're picking up on the side of the street like they're not asking for an ID yeah you, know, if you go into a dispensary it's just like a liquor store well at least they're they're required to ask for ID um, right so it's a little bit of a so that brings everything you know behind counters and out of the yeah. hands of kids. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think those laws are pretty much working as the, as they were intended to. Um, yeah, I think another one is like the idea of like uh, traffic safety being compromised, um, especially since there's not really a way to accurately test for impairment with marijuana mm. like, like there is with alcohol. Um, of course, there are there is technology there just not being used because I know I've had right. some people on the so, show that that do, that have breathalyzers that. Right. I mean, how much of that is legitimate concerns and how much of it is just, again, like we're talking about stereotypes? And um, I mean, I think it is legitimate, but I think people should also remember that it's already a crime to drive under the influence of any, anything, even marijuana. So, I mean, we're not advocating for everyone to, you know, smoke and get high and then get behind the wheel. 
Um, no one should be doing that actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's already a crime to drive under the influence. It's in legal states also. Um, and I think also that, I mean, the people that are using marijuana are already using it. They're not, not using it because it's illegal, you know? So yep. right. I exactly. That, um, I mean, there also has been research that's shown that there hasn't been any, you know, significant increases in, you know, traffic fatalities or like THC positive. Right. In the legal states. Right. Uh, so it's, it's a valid concern, but I think that, um, those concerns have been put to rest or at least let's, let's talk about specific candidates if we can, like, are there people that you guys are very, are the tight races, um, across the country, some that we should, you know, we're a national show. So there's people across the country listening to us. Are there mm -hmm. tight races that we should have our eye on that we can, you know, that could really help the cause here um, if that candidate gets in or it gets reelected? Yeah, I mean, I think um, some of the major races like in, in the Senate um, are, are ones to look at. I think taking the, taking the Senate is crucial to advancing any marijuana reform yep. um, nationally. So, I mean, I'm thinking of the one coming up that the Arizona race um, with uh, Senator Martha McSally, who's a Republican, her seat is up. Um, she's being challenged by um, a Democrat, Mark Kelly. Um, he's uh, he's the husband of uh, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Yep. Um, so I am looking I'm looking at that one. Yeah. That's coming up. Is she, um, has she been pretty anti? Um, yeah. Cannabis? And I think okay. just generally, I mean, obviously Democrats are, are more supportive. So I think any of those races with those vulnerable Republicans are ones to look at. Um, what are some other ones? Or even like Democratic seats that are that are at risk of being flipped. Um, I'm think also thinking of the um, uh, the Michigan race. Mm -hmm. um, where uh, Democratic Senator Gary C Gary Peters, um, his his seat is up, and he's being challenged by a uh, Republican. Okay. Um, yeah, I just think that any um, any Democratic seats that are, are vulnerable of being flipped are, are ones to look at. Um, definitely make sure you're registered to vote for everyone that's listening. Yeah. Um, we actually have a really good resource on the normal website, um, normal.org slash election um, has everything. It has all the information on ballot initiatives, the presidential candidates, and it also has resources to register to vote and check your check your status and polling places and things like that. Is it, so the presidential um, race is sort of complicated on this topic because neither candidate has really come out and right. said that they endorse, you know, full national legalization or, um, but, uh, you know, you've you've said that you guys tend to lean more on the Democrat side um, when you're so. Has normal taken a position of endor of endorsing a presidential candidate? The presidential um, candidate. We have not yet. I'm not sure if we will be endorsing someone. Yeah, like you said, both of the major presidential candidates' positions are not ideal. I yeah. mean, out of all of like the Democratic nominees. Um, this year for, for, for President Joe Biden was probably the most conservative position on, on marijuana. And again, um, I think that's a more of a generational thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I guess it's, it's notable that um, vice presidential, uh, the Democratic nominee Kamala Harris, she is actually the lead sponsor of the descheduling bill that's that's pending in Congress. So that's something. Yeah. And, and yet her history, you know, has been not always so... Um, positive as far as you know as an attorney general right um, yeah uh, she definitely gets backlash for that but i think um maybe she's I evolved people change well for sure well, it's um, interesting to me because because sometimes we'll we'll see polling that shows that it really is a bipartisan issue mm -hmm. um and that a lot of republicans support legalization and it's funny that doesn't kind of float up to the to the representatives um I mean, I think there are probably some Republicans, right, that are pro. Yeah, it's definitely bipartisan. I mean, the latest national polling, um, Gallup usually does a polling, like maybe every year or two. Um, yeah, the latest national polling, we saw majorities of all major political parties supported um, ending the federal prohibition, which is 
which is real, real progress. I mean, I always like to, to point out that, I mean, now we're at what, like 68% public support. Back in 1970, when Normal was founded, we were at 12%. So Jeez. there's yes. been a lot of progress. In yeah. Years, and how do you, how do you, why do you think that's happened, that there's been progress? Um, I just think that, um, I mean, yeah, the, the public is coming around to the idea. I mean, again, marijuana was kind of always present and whether it's illegal or not doesn't change the fact that people are using it. So we might as well regulate it in a way that's safe and uh, convenient for people to access it. But yeah, I mean, I think the, the times are just like culturally just shifting. Um, and again, yeah, the generational gap. I mean, most young people um, are supportive regardless of like political ideology anyway. So yeah, I think it's just culturally shifting times. Yeah. Um, some of the legislation, you know, that's been floating around Congress, like the states, uh, oh, not the state, the um, fair banking, mm, safe, um, yeah. sa safe act, safe. Um, what, you know, obviously you guys fully endorse that. Do you think that that has a chance of passing next year or does it very much largely depend on yeah the I think turns so I think out of yeah I mean it's already passed the House of Representatives so I think that gives it a little bit of momentum um, but yeah I mean it is a marijuana bill but it's also just like a, a banking bill I mean yep. it wouldn't really um, do anything to address like the schedule one status of marijuana or criminalization in, in any prohibition states um, but it would just give the legal industry access to, to banks, which makes it so much safer, just not only for the businesses as a whole, but for the employees that work there. Um, so I think there's definitely more openness to advance that type of legislation than a more broader, um, like uh, descheduling legislation. Um, but I don't know about with a Republican controlled Senate, if they'd be willing to take it up no, I yeah. doubt with Mitch McConnell, McConnell in charge. So that's also another race to look at. Mitch McConnell is up for reelection. If you look, live in Kentucky, vote him out. <laughs> yeah. He is not a, a very good friend to cannabis. Yeah, Although what's interesting is he seems to be a friend to CBD at least. Right. He like champions all the hemp reform, yeah, but we'll because that's his state. Marijuana. Yeah. 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 Um, so, Okay, let's get Mitch out of there. Ditch Mitch. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about national legalization, though. I mean, you're you're there in the Beltway, um, always getting a barometer. Do you ever see that being a reality? That I mean, or, or are you um, fairly skeptical that that's going to happen in the I next mean, ten years? I think that marijuana will get descheduled from the Controlled Substances Act. Um, I don't know if that'll happen within the next like five years, maybe in the next 10 years. Yeah. Um, I don't super optimistic that this is happening. Like yeah. That. We like to say cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the more act, which is the legislation that would remove marijuana from the controlled substances act that was supposed to be voted on by the house of representatives actually like today or yesterday. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to be up for a vote. They pulled it at the last minute um, because of like COVID relief concerns. Um, so that was unfortunate news. But that's sort of more symbolic, right? Because that would never pass yeah, in the Senate. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah, more of a... that's. I mean, yeah, it's historic. That's never happened, and like the House of Representatives has never voted on a bill to end marijuana prohibition. So it would definitely be historic. Um, if that were to happen, I mean, even even the legislation passing like the Judiciary Committee, I think that was last year, um, that even was a huge deal. So any progress will take pretty much. Do you do you ever get concerned that all the progress we've made is going to be taken away? I mean, I always say like, oh, you know, the train has left the, the station like we're 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 on the way to, you know, full legalization or at least, you know, majority of states legalizing but maybe the opposite could be true. Maybe like we're going to pull back and people are going to get scared. Um, and, and uh, do you ever worry that, that the reverse could happen? Um, not really. I mean, yeah. I think just year after year, even just like 
So a big part of my job is like tracking legislation that moves forward at the state level and even just year to year, like I've seen such a huge increase in just the amount of legislation that's being introduced. And I think that says a lot because I think for a lawmaker to be willing to, you know, put their name on this piece of legislation, like that's a huge step. And like more lawmakers now are willing to do that and even just start those conversations with their colleagues. Um, so, I mean, I don't think state level momentum is going to stop at all. Um, and I think eventually that'll just have put up so much pressure on the federal government that they'll have no other choice really, but to, to, to deschedule it. But I mean, I don't think it'll ever be like regulated nationally or anything like that. I think it'll just be state by state, kind of like how alcohol is. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, lastly, criminalization of cannabis. I know you're an advocate for right reforms in the laws and um, especially for low, uh, what do they call that? Um, uh, small, what is the, the term the, when people, minor, minor cannabis inf- offenses um, uh, yeah. and expunging people's records for that. Mm-hmm. Where are we with that? Do you feel like that's, there's momentum in that whole movement? Because there's, there's, a, there's often two kind of movements happening in cannabis. There's, there's that side of the debate and then there's the debate of just you know legal legalization um mm-hmm. and sometimes they're at odds right because you have advocates who are supporting um decriminalization of cannabis uh and that's a harder issue for some of the politicians than just like legalizing america you know they're like two different issues yeah. so but anyway let's talk about where do you see that does that have momentum it yeah like i think it, it definitely does i mean expungement yeah i mean especially in legal states now when um, a lot of them have like gone back and in- implemented expungement measures like California has has um, started an automatic expungement program and um, we really push for automatic expungement rather than um, just like a, a normal expungement because that takes the burden off of the, the individual and kind of puts it back onto the courts. What so is automatic? Ex- explain what you mean. Um, so with expungement, typically a person who has a criminal record would have to apply to the to the court that sentenced them to wipe their record clean. Um, with automatic expungement, that um, kind of puts the burden back on the courts to just automatically review those records and expunge them um, without a cost to the, to the individual. A lot of times it could be costly to go through that, that process, like applying for the expungement. Some, sometimes you need a lawyer to help you through it. Um, so that would take that burden off of the individual and put it back onto the courts. Um, especially in legal states, people shouldn't be paying the price for an offense that's now legal. Yeah. Um, and again, those, those criminal convictions will follow you for the rest of your life. If you're trying to get a job, um, if you're a, a young people that are applying to college, they can't get student aid. Um, so it really affects people in, in various aspects of life. So I think that expungement is, is super, super important um, now okay. as more states are starting to legalize and stop arresting people. Well, Carly, well, thank you for fighting the good fight. And yeah. do you feel like there's other people, a lot of other people like you on Capitol Hill lobbying and trying to, I sometimes get worried that we get, that the marijuana movement gets kind of, you know, usurped by or not usurped but by overshadowed by you know bigger more well-funded lobbying efforts but Mm -hmm. do you do you sense that we that you have some power down there in in washington yeah i think so i mean i think um normal being a grassroots organization we really urge that constituent Mm -hmm. contact so and i think when constituents reach out directly to their lawmakers it, it for sure makes an impact rather than like me or like some other industry lobbyist lobbyist just going in there that doesn't really have any connection to those lawmakers. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the grassroots nature of, of normal is, is helpful. Um, although we do see more industries and outside industries like alcohol lobbyists coming in now. Um, but yeah, normal's goal has always been to, to put the consumer at the forefront of our efforts. So um, we try to spe- spread that message um, whenever we're lobbying and talking to lawmakers and other advocates. So I hope that'll that'll resonate with people. And yeah. Okay, great. Well, this has been really informative. I thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was awesome.